Blog Talk Radio. Cherokee Billy is a spiritual advisor and certified animal communicator who has been guiding people on their sacred path for nearly 40 years. Her ability to hone in on her clients' needs has made her one of the most sought-after spiritual advisors in the country. With Cherokee Billy's guidance, you can take the first steps or refine your journey along your sacred path. Before we get going, we ask that you do your part. Have your one question ready, keep it concise, and stay on topic. One concise, on-topic question. And now, here's Cherokee Billy. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Sacred Path Radio Program. I'm here with my special guest, Ray. Hi, Ray. Hello. You there? Hey. I'm here. Uh, Did I catch you off guard? Uh, Yeah, a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wonder how many people are listening. Uh, With the holiday weekend, people are thinking about partying more than they're thinking about you know what we're doing here but that's okay you know you can listen to this anytime in the future and it will be on YouTube as well for those listening but we're here with a great subject life after death because you and I have had so much experience with this and so many people wonder about life after death you know they fear it Uh, so many people fear it some do not but many do and they and there's not a reason to fear it. You know, most people, when they die, the majority, go out peacefully. You know, it isn't like they're uh, screaming and kicking all the way. It's usually a peaceful thing. I know it has been for most of the people in my life. You know, of course, there are, are other things that happen that aren't peaceful, but the majority is, and that's what we want to f- focus on, the positive on it, not the negative. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, because, again, there's so much, you know, I, I've i got personal stories, and I know you have a lot, Ray, but I'd like to start with, you know, what really set me off. I had been studying with uh, different teachers from Christianity, metaphysics, Native American, Buddhism. I studied for 16 years to really understand because... Religion being brought up in religion had made me basically agnostic, an atheist, so to speak, and it took a lot for me to uh, come to a belief again. It took a lot, and God sent around somebody who was quite unusual to help me believe in his capabilities, his, his whole being. That's the best way I can put it. And, uh, what happened is, you know, I was again studying, and uh, studying was the main thing. But what really did it for me was my father's passing. Uh, he was everything to me, and uh, a great man in more ways than I can ever express. And he never, I asked him one time what he believed in, and he said, it's my belief. He was a uh, pure Cherokee, and he was never one to talk much, but he was in a coma. He was 74, 76 years old. Yeah, 76. And um, they were keeping him alive on machines. And this just drove me insane because I don't believe in that. I believe that, you know, when it's time to go, let someone go. And uh, I didn't know what to do. And I'd never done this in my life. But uh, I, out of desperation, I astral projected myself to my father's hospital room. And once I was there, I took his spirit out of his body, and together we traveled to the spirit world. And when we got there, there was a man, an army sergeant there, and it was my father's army sergeant from World War II who greeted us. And he took my father by the hand and took him into a room, indicating me sit outside, and I did. And I could hear people talking and laughing and, you know, all types of conversations. And I just waited. And when the time he had finished came, he came out of the room and I put him back into his body. 
and I came back into my body and let it go. Well, the next day he passed. You know, once he knew what was there for him on the, the other side, he was able to let go, and they couldn't keep him alive anymore on those machines, and I was very happy about that. But what was astounding is the next day, he woke me up screaming in my ear loud everything he had wanted to tell me. And I woke up saying, hey, you're hurting my ear. It was so loud. And my father was standing there. And uh, for the next seven days, he kept coming in and talking to me. And uh, believe me, that will change you when you see that. And from there on, I knew that life after death was very much a real thing. And I did continue to have visitations from my father for quite some time. Now, that's my little story of what really convinced me and kicked me in the head and said, this is real, life after death. And I've never worried about it since then. And you can read about my experience on my website in my article, Afterlife. Now, Ray, I know you've had tons of experience starting with your mother. So if you could share that, I know people would like it. Well, uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> it's been more than one, but the last, lately, the last ones that, that I had is um, I, I was pretty sick in 2019, and uh, I, you know, it, I, I saw my mom so much, I swear she moved in, which was a good thing. Um, the first time, I, you know, I was waiting on the ambulance to come, and she was standing right in front of me. Uh, then a month later, I was back in the hospital, and uh, <clears throat> you know, my mom just standing at the edge of the bed, and she said, "It's you know, it, it's okay. It, there's no problem." My grandmother said, "Come on," and uh, you know, if you want to, my mom said, "It's not your time." Um, so you know, I mean, I, she says it'll be soon. Of course, soon to her, or soon to the spirit world is could be you know the next day, 10 years, 30 years, uh, there's no time limit because their time limit is different than ours. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've seen her quite a bit. I, uh, I've seen other friends of mine. Um, I saw her right before, uh, right before the ambulance come and got her uh, back in 68. So, uh, I mean, it's, I, I've seen her quite a bit, uh, along with well, other your people. Mother, your mother had passed before the ambulance got there, am I not correct? Uh, no, she had passed that the following night. Uh, she had... But um, you saw her spirit um, oh, yeah. before she passed? Yeah, well, she come, she come to me. She come to me before she passed. Uh, unfortunately, in spirit uh, form. My, are we, wait, yeah, wait, can yeah. you clarify that in spirit form? Okay. Correct. Correct. Unfortunately, uh, I was sent after coffee. I was the youngest one. Uh, I was sent after coffee, but I knew she had passed on when I was on my way back up with the coffee. Uh, and then when I walked into the room, that's when I was told that she had passed. So, uh, her mom and dad were there. Uh, my half brother, half sister, um, a bunch of people were there. Mhm. Mm yeah. But it's amazing, you know, at such a young age, how you had these spiritual experiences. Mine didn't come much till much later in my life. Well, You've I was, had so I many. was seventeen when that happened. Well, I was that's very young. Well, Six, I was 16, and I turned 17 uh, a few days later. Yeah. Well, again, you've had this going on for a long time, and many of your experiences are amazing to me, you know, what happens. But, uh, you know, I just want to encourage people to know that there is life after death, and not everyone's going to have experiences like you've had, Ray, or myself but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist it just there we go back to that keyword faith you have to well, have faith and believe 
I can remember uh, when I was in the hospital the last time, um, the nurse came in the next day, and she was she was in a family way, and she asked me who I was talking to, and I, I started to tell her, and I said, no, nah, never mind, you wouldn't have seen them because they're no longer here. So, I, I mean, she she heard me talking like, uh, um, like no tomorrow. So, I, I mean, it, it, you got to believe that there's something good afterwards, um, just like you got to believe there's something bad afterwards. If there's a good, there's a bad. Yeah, it's like the yin and the yang, a positive and a negative. There's always one or Correct. the other. Correct. And, Correct. and people it's, don't it's, always understand that. And, and when I how you live. Right, how you live. And, and what you feel and stuff like I said. My father never expressed what he believed spiritually never i had no clue but he sure demonstrated it once he died that's for sure that is whoo that was just overwhelming now my mother passed years before my father and i did not have any communication from her but she did i gotta tell this little story the um when she died she had been on the phone with her best friend and her best friend heard her go <gasps> And she said, I got to hang up, and she hung up the phone. Well, she died from a heart attack, and we know it was right then. And uh, the next day, her friend was sitting early in the morning having coffee like she normally did, and it was the time my mother would call where her phone rang, and she answered it. And remember, this is long before cell phones, just regular phones. She answered the phone, and it was my mother. And she said, well, I wanted you to know I'm okay. I'm calling to let you know that everything's fine. I'm doing great, and I really like it here. I can eat anything I want, and I won't gain weight. Well, when she told me that, I knew that was my mother for sure. And uh, well, then my mother said to her, well, I have to go. And she hung up, but she wanted to reassure her friend that she was okay. And that was astounding to me. Many people called her friend crazy at the time. I did not. I knew it was real. So I just want to share that little story. I've, I, you know, some powerful experiences around my parents passing and going into my pets. Uh, almost every pet I've had has come to me in spirit form, and I've seen them. They've jumped on the bed, jumped on top of me, you name it, and uh, they show that they're still living after their death as well. Something well, you want to add there? Right? Go ahead. No, I said something you want to oh. add. Oh yeah, I, about to say I, I, I've had I've had a lot of my uh, lately. I've been getting a lot of a lot of my pets coming to visit me. Uh, Charlie, my horse, uh, Peanut, uh, my Shetland pony, and uh, you know some dogs that I had. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it was strange because it, it was one of the older dogs, uh, probably from the 60s, uh, that come to visit me. And uh, it was it was a little strange, but I, mean, I, I liked it. I mean, he, he was wagging his tail and just jumping up and down for joy and, you know, just, just rubbing up against me and stuff like that. Amazing. You know, because they, again, they still live on. There is life after death for animals as well as humans. In the yeah, spirit right. world, it's it's unlimited space. You know, here on planet Earth, it's limited space, but in the spirit world, it's not. That's why it can be billions and billions there, and it never is going to be too crowded. That would be nice to have a have a big old farm up there and have the horses and dogs and and uh, everybody running around just enjoying the heck out of themselves. It's quite possible for you that will be the situation, hard to say, but I think envisioning what you want and asking for it is a big help on what happens afterwards. All I know is people who have no spirituality 
have had interesting things in the spirit world go on for them. So be encouraged to know that there is more than you think. There are so many dimensions in the spirit world. It's not just one level. Many. Like, well, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. And there are. There are many different mansions, many different levels. So, you know, be aware that you're not going to always go to hell, you know, as everyone thinks that maybe they're going there. You know, it has to do with your works, what you do, how you live your life. That determines where you're going more than anything else. Being good to one another, kind, loving, caring. You know, nobody's perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. But, you know, what you do to help one another is, I think, an important part of what goes on after life. I, I agree 100%. You know, if, if you're a, a, a Jeffrey Dahmer, we'll say, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm not picking on him, but, you know, he, he, he did some crazy stuff. Pretty horrendous things, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, you, know you, you don't know where he's going to be. You know, he could be down below, he could be up above. I'd have a lack of word to use. Well, you know, there's redemption even in the last second of life. A person can be redeemed. You know, we don't know. That's why we can't judge it. Because there was an interesting movie made in the 30s called Strange Cargo. It's a rare movie with Clark Gable and Joan Crawford. And I, I've never seen it on TV. I had to order it. It's custom made on DVD. And it's one of the most fascinating stories about God, Jesus, and life and redemption. It is an incredible movie. It's about these uh, hardened criminals on uh, some tropical island in a prison. And uh, they escape, these prisoners. And uh, it's what they encounter along their trying to get through this jungle. And one by one, they die. And it just shows and there's one of the prisoners there who happens to be Jesus, and it's just an incredible movie. Again, Strange Cargo, made in the 30s with Clark Gable, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Never so even heard I of it. I wish they had it available. Yeah, I know. And like I say, I had to custom order it on DVD. Paid a lot of money for it, but it's just that profound of a movie. And uh, in it, Joan Crawford, who always looked like the, you know, glamour woman, she let herself be natural and look like a woman crawling through the jungle. They really portrayed, they really did a great job in this movie in every way. Because hmm. many of the movies from the 30s and 40s, you know, people were never without makeup. But, uh, again, it was very authentic, authenticity to it. And it just gave you a perspective about redemption, how it can be the last breath of your life. So, you know, like you mentioned, Jeffrey Dahmer, Charles Manson, another infamous maniac. Yeah. You know, who's to say what happened when he passed? I am not here to say. I don't know. But, you know, his soul is somewhere out there. Yeah. And uh, let's hope that he did find the the right way, the truth at last. Who's to say? Well, That's why as you I can't say, always you know, judge people. As I say, you know, if you ask for forgiveness even a second before you pass, you know, you're forgiven. But, I mean, it's that's really not that time you want to wait for is the last second. Yeah, it's best to do, it. do it ahead of time. But the point is, you know, we don't know. We can't say, oh, that, that person's in hell. I once read an article, and I wish I would have kept bookmarked it. It was probably 20 years ago about Hitler and how he could be in heaven. And it was fascinating, you know. I mean, people that you can be judged as, and he truly was a maniac, uh, but yet you don't know what the soul is and where it goes. That's the difference. So anyone you can condemn you know, for whatever reason, you still don't know what their soul is about. No one knows it but God. It's between God, the divine, the great creator, the great spirit, whatever 
you want to call it, that's what it is. Absolutely. And, I uh, mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not for us to judge because we don't know all the ins and outs. Uh, we're, not, uh, <laughs> we're not the all-knowing Oz. Um, so, you know, not at all. No. Nah. So, uh, as I say, those, yeah, uh, how do you call it? Those without sin, let them cast the first stone. And it's the same old thing, you know, if, if those who are perfect, uh, you know, let, let them criticize that nobody's perfect. That is a fact. Nobody is. Nobody. And, you know, we all make mistakes, and we're bound to make them even after, let's say, we have a great spiritual awakening. doesn't mean you're going to not make mistakes. You still will. You just keep trying to do your best, pray that it's blessed, and let God take care of the rest. That's all you can do. You know, we cannot control everything in our lives. Absolutely. And, you know, you've got to keep just praying. Always pray. You can't say that enough. Pray and ask for better things. Now, um, no one has called in today, but that's okay. I figured with this holiday, it would not be many people paying attention, and that's fine. But uh, I hope that you look up some of my articles on life after death through my website or through some of my books. Awaken Your True Spiritual Self is one of my number one sellers, and I go into a great deal about uh, these different subjects. So you may want to check out some of my books on my website as well as my services at CherokeeBillySpiritualAdvisor.com. I have a great deal that I offer besides readings, uh, classes, books, and other things. So is there anything else you want to add in here? We've got a few more minutes, Ray. Yeah, sure. Uh Always, I mean, I, I don't care. And I, Any I'm not of your experiences it. are really good because oh, 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 oh. you've had so many. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I would be, uh, I would be going someplace, and I'd say, you know, let's not make a right here. Let's make a left. And uh, you, know, you went to the right, and there, there was a, there, there was a massive accident. Uh, um, uh, you know, I see some of my friends uh, every now and then. Well, I should say I shouldn't say friends. I should say acquaintance, uh, people that I know. Uh, I see them every once in a while, and I go, I eh, wonder what the heck they're doing here. Uh, they come to visit. Um, it, it's it's uh, you know you just see different. I see different things. Um, it, it's like uh, you know. It, when I had my uh, knee replaced, and you know, I I went back in time, which was really screwy. But uh, I mean, and my blood pressure went wacky. They 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 was very very concerned about it. And uh, you know, I had, and I've seen I I saw my mom there, my grandma, and you know, so uh, you know, it, 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 you just see people, and I see people that you know, I'm sitting there. And then all of a sudden, uh, I'll see like me dancing off, off, off in a corner. So uh, with somebody that I know, but I mean it's somebody that 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 is that has passed. So uh, and your it, spirit it, it, is what you're seeing. Wait, yeah. am I saying? Yeah. Are you saying your spirit is dancing with them, not you, the physical? Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, right. Not not me physically, my spirit. And it was like yeah. it's like I could just. You know, go tap them out and say, "Okay, I'm next." But it's it's a spirit sort of a thing. It's not me personally. Uh, I, you know, I mean, it's, that. It's, just, it's just stuff like that that, and it's coming more and more and more and more as uh, as the time goes on. Um, it used to be every every once in a while, but I would say. And I don't know if it's because I had my my knee done and it kicked it all in for me or what, but I see more and more and more and more. Uh, it's like you took me into the spirit world and I saw my stepdad, which I had no idea, you know, that I was going to see him, but I did. Right. You know, that's the thing. You know, you never thought you would have seen him. 
and we don't know who we're going to meet on the other side. It could be someone you didn't like, didn't care for, whatever, and they may be the number one person that you're meeting. You know, we don't know what happens to someone's soul. We can sit here and judge people, but we don't know within their soul what's going on. We have no clue. Absolutely, absolutely not. Just like trying to read someone's mind, you, you, you can't do that either. So, uh, well, I you mean, can to some degree. Well, yeah. You know, read a person's mind, but you can't read every single thought. No. You know, that's yeah. not for us to do, really. Right. It's just, uh, it, it gets a little screwy on on some things. And uh, I mean, if it, 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 you look at stuff, for me, I look at stuff and it, it doesn't freak me out, but I, I wonder, why am I seeing this or why am I seeing that? Uh, but there's a reason for it. Nine, I, I have never seen anything bad. It's always been happy. Uh, and stuff like that, but never bad. Well, that's a good point you brought up. You know, I have had communication with my father since passing and my mother, and it is positive because it is a better place. It really is. And my parents have been trying to indicate to me that they're still there and that things are good for them. You know, and it's wonderful to know that it is a better place. That's yeah. important for every one of us to realize it is a better place. This life is, we're stuck in this third dimension. We're stuck in our world. But this isn't all there is. I know many people don't believe beyond this dimension. But you've got to expand yourself and realize there is. Now, people in our generation, Ray and I, uh, he did a lot of LSD and things. And it opened people up to seeing the spirit world and having more of an experience in a spiritual manner. I'm not saying do LSD. No, no, no. That's a very radical way to go into spirit when there's much better ways naturally to go in. But again, it brought an awareness to many people who never would have believed in spiritual things by doing psychedelics. Right. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's drugs are never the answer because it's it's all full. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it's just you know it, you got to do it more naturally so you, you can understand it and and look at things normally and say, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, this is who I talked to. This is who I saw. And and, and I'm sure who's ever on the other side don't want you to be all. Uh, whacked Blast out, to, it out. To, to see you know, yeah. and you're, when you're using something like a psychedelic drug, whatever the drug may be, it, you don't know where you're going to go with it. It's not as good as trying to delve in through meditation or prayer or whatever to get into a spiritual place. Much better done that way, much more natural, and uh, you're going to retain more of what happened. Because, again, with experiences through drugs, you don't always remember what really went on. That's part of the problem right. with it. But, you know, again, spiritual protection, protect yourself. Don't do things crazy that will, uh, you know, like crazy drugs or drinking too much or anything that takes you too far out of yourself. It's not healthy. Now, we're down to the last minute here. and. I appreciate anybody who's listened to this show today. I hope there's someone out there. If not, Ray and I had a good conversation. But if you're <laughs> curious about any of this, go to my website, CherokeeBillySpiritualAdvisor.com. Check out my services, my articles, my books, and you'll find there's a lot available. So I thank you, Ray, for taking time out and being here today. No problem. You know, it's it. always interesting. Yeah, I always appreciate your being here because it helps me to have someone to bounce thoughts off of, you know, instead of just talking blindly to myself. It's not so easy, but I do appreciate it. And we're down to the last second here. Thank you for joining us today. And all of you, be blessed. <laughs>